Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I thought I would discuss more of my analogue cameras because I'm quite into my analogue photography um, and I thought I would share my Canon Ixus camera which I absolutely love. I love this tiny little camera. It's so little and cute and compact. It's actually an electric um, analogue camera that has a teeny tiny little LCD screen at the top here which just shows you um, the frame counter um, but there is no a screen on the back to show you the picture that you're taking unfortunately and um, that technology did not exist in the mid to late 1990s which is when this camera is from it probably did <laughs> um it's really really easy to use cute and compact it's also incredibly reliable and just consistently takes really nice sharp clear images so it's a great one for when you're out and about because it just slips so easily in your pocket and i have seen them on ebay for as little as five pounds so it's pretty affordable the camera gives you three different size options. There is the H for HD or 16x9, there is C for classic or 3x2 and there is P for panoramic or 3x1. And it works for the classic and panoram panoramic sizes just by cropping the image down. The Ixus camera has an autofocus as well as an electromagnetically programmed shutter and aperture according to the internet, which is very exciting. It also has a zoom of 24 to 48 millimeters, which is not really anything compared to modern digital cameras. I think even my phone would outperform that, um, but it's still quite nice to have a zoom function and be in control of the zoom. Um, it does result in really clear and sharp uh, images really consistently, as I said before. One thing that I forgot to mention about this camera is that it's pretty loud. It whirs because it's electric. Um, so it's not a stealth camera by any means. So when you turn it on, and the same with the zoom. Which can get a little bit annoying. Like I said, it's not gonna be stealthy. So you're not gonna sneak up on and wanna take a picture of them using this camera. However, if you just take a picture of the countryside, it doesn't really make much difference. <laughs> One thing to note though, is that the field of vision is relatively small compared to modern cameras. So you do just have to bear that in mind. But what you see when you look through the viewfinder, I think is 90% of the image that you're going to actually get in the final photograph. So it's pretty reliable in terms of what you see is what you're gonna get from the, from the final result. It uses APS film or advanced photo system film, which is really easy to use and load. Um, it was developed in the mid 1990s, 1996, I believe, but discontinued by 2011 due to a fall in the popularity of the APS film, probably due to the decreasing costs of digital cameras. So as digital cameras became more affordable, obviously people were turning to analog less and the APS films less as well. The APS film is 24 millimeters wide, so it is smaller than your normal 35 millimeters film. Um, but like I said, it is super easy to load into the film. You don't have to faff around trying to get the tiny little end of the film uh, inserted in the right place and then wound on. You just slot it straight in um, and then it goes. And the same thing with rewinding, you just press a button and it will automatically rewind the film for you. And it's very easy to see when you look at the film, whether or not it is um, fully used or processed. The main downside though now with the APS film is that it's much harder to get hold of. Obviously you can find it on the internet but it is going to cost you about £10 for one film and then probably about £10 to develop the film and you're going to struggle to find places that do it. You will have to probably send it away somewhere that you find online to get the development which then takes you longer to get the pictures back. So it depends whether or not that's an issue for you. <laughs> Since APS film was all discontinued in 2011, any APS film you buy now will all be expired. Um, but I've never actually had a problem with the expired APS film, so it does seem to um, retain its uh, performance, unlike some other expired films which I've used in a different format. The other downside, I suppose, with this camera is that it does require a battery because it's um, electronic. And it did require a special battery which I did have to track down and find, uh, which was also a little bit more expensive than your average AAA. But I have just put one battery in and it seems to be holding up pretty well. So the battery obviously lasts quite a long time. I think it probably also depends on how much you use the flash. Again, it does have a flash included in the camera because it's electric. 
Like I said, the camera is very compact and pocket sized and it's incredibly easy to use. It's very consistent with its results and it's very reliable. I think that's probably a combination of the camera itself as well as the APS film. Both of them have just retained their performance and they just work really well together. The other interesting quirk of this camera is that you do have the option to add text to your images. I'm not sure that I've ever actually tried this function, so I don't know whether it still works, but you can add some preset phrases onto your pictures. So the options that you have are, I love you, thank you, season's greetings, happy birthday, and congratulations. And you can do them in both English and German you want to. I'm not sure what the point of that was. Perhaps it was just a technological development that they got excited about and wanted to add it in. Or perhaps people did genuinely use these as birthday cards, Christmas cards, that kind of thing, because you could take the picture, add the text, get it developed, and then give the person the image as their gift. Um, not really sure. So that's my little overview of the Canon Ixis. Um, like I said, I really like this camera and I have seen them for about five pounds. So if you were wanting to start with an analog camera, but you wanted something easy to use and also compact, easy to carry around and affordable, this might be the way to go. It also might be a good one for children or young people who are starting out because it will be more um, familiar to them because it's um, electronic over a more manual um, analog camera that you have to wind on and the film is a lot easier to put in and out but you do have the additional costs of the APS film and also the development of the APS film. So there are pros and cons. Anyway, I hope you liked this overview and if you did, please give me a like and if you'd like to see more videos on photography and all the other cool things I post about, please subscribe.